Picture this. You're scrolling on Instagram and you see it. The perfect look. It sends a zap of inspiration from head to toe and you think, what if I could look like that? You mean I could be a movie star on the red carpet? <laughs> well, we can try and look like it with our makeup. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my clear steps on how to take a makeup inspo pic that you find on Instagram or Pinterest and morph it to fit your face so you can live out your fantasies and further use makeup to express how you feel and show who you want to be. Come and follow me in recreating this inspo look that I got from Selena Gomez because I love this look and okay, some people do say that I kind of look like her. Stop! Some people have said it. Some people have said it. So without further ado, let me show you how you can recreate your favorite makeup photo. Let's go. Oh, and by the way, if you want to subscribe, then please subscribe if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I mean, no, don't follow me on Twitter. That's a scary place. But if you want to follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok, you totally can do that too. Okay, let's go. Enough talking. Whoa, hello. Hi. No makeup. <laughs> the coffee is giving. The coffee is giving what it needs to give. <laughs> Okay, so step one is picking an inspo pic. Where can we find inspo pics? Pinterest, baby. I'm on the Pinterest wave. Go follow me on Pinterest, Rachel Oakwell, and you. -E. Um, I heard that Pinterest is the new wave and I'm jumping on it. I'm surfing USA because it's so searchable. TikTok is becoming very searchable as well. Um, as with Instagram, those are the places I find my inspo pics. Now, none of these rules are hard and fast. In fact, none of them are rules. They're theories that I've come up with. So like I said, not hard and fast, but picking a person who resembles you in some sort of way does help. I say pick someone who resembles you, not looks like you, because they don't need to look exactly like you. That's a really small box to put yourself in. But choosing somebody that has a similar eye shape to you. If you're looking for eyeshadow inspo and you have downturned eyes, maybe include in your search downturned eyes. So if you do see a look, but you know, this person has upturned eyes and you have downturned eyes, what can we do? Identify what you like about this photo, about this makeup, and then kind of um, adjust your searching based on that. I love this colorful cut crease, but I have hooded eyes. So let me search colorful cut crease on hooded eyes. Oh my god, what pops up? My YouTube video, cut crease on hooded eyes. <laughs> what are the odds? And this just leads us right into step two. What is it about the look that we like? Identifying what inspires us particularly about this makeup look will help us to build the recreation on our face. What do we need to focus on? And how to mold it to our face. What to play up and what to emphasize and what we can maybe leave behind if there is something we need to leave behind. Is it the shape of the look that we like? Is it the colors of the look that we like? Is it the style of the look that we like? I might find a picture of a graphic liner very inspiring. The shape is very beautiful, but the color, not gonna work on me. So the shape of the image is what is important, not the color. Now I know what I can switch out for myself and what I can keep. If I see a picture of e-girl makeup, but the eyeliner is downturned when I have more almond eyes. You know, the e-girl makeup expresses how I want to feel, but I don't love the shape. So the style remains, but the shape can change. In this image of Selena Baby, I love everything about it. I love the colors, the style, the shape. It's... Marissima. All right, boom, we're good to go. Let's break down the look so we can gather all the products we're gonna need and lay out all the steps we're gonna need to do to recreate it. I start with the bottom layer and then work my way out. So bottom layer would be like foundation, stuff like that. And then top layer would probably be liner, lips, lashes, stuff like that, stuff that goes on swap. Now what can help is if you can find other images of the makeup to really see what's going on here. Lighting and filters and, and angles can really manipulate how a certain look looks. So if we can find other pictures, great. This Selena photo is from the 2019 Can Cons film festival. <laughs> so I could easily find other images in different lighting, different cameras, different angles, different levels of retouching, either reverse Google imaging or going to that person's page and looking for different photos. It's just, it's just very helpful to see what exactly is going on here. You are so loud. 
I'm going to be breaking down and running through the process as I do it on my face so you can see how I chose certain products, how I chose certain colors and different application techniques to recreate this beautiful look. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with the bottom layer, the base, very matte skin. It's a very lightly sculpted base. So when I think matte skin, I think silicone base. A lot of water-based primers and foundations lead to a juicy, dewy look, which is what I usually go for, but for matte, I like silicone. So I'm gonna be using the e.l.f. Putty Primer. This is the Cookies and Cream collection, but it's a silicone-based primer, so. Oh my God, it kind of smells like Bailey's. You oh my god! You know, you know, like Irish coffee. Okay, hoo hoo. Silicone based primers really create a smooth finish that really fills in all the pores and lines uh, in your face to create that very porcelain, uh, doll like skin, which is very old Hollywood, very red carpet. Whereas water based products help to melt with the skin, the silicone creates a nice layer, a nice. Uh, Shield. Y'all, the fragrance. If this breaks my skin out, I'm about to be pissed. Whatever. Nobody wants their makeup to smell like cookies and cream. Nobody wants their makeup to smell like food. And for my base, I'm going to be using the Ordinary High Coverage Foundation because it is a uh, silicone base. This foundation looks really good when you first put it on, but I do notice throughout the day, it gets pretty dry. It, it does kind of emphasize my pores and stuff. Wee. Ugh, it's so fun. It is a pretty high coverage look, so I might even go in with another layer. Ugh, when I cover up the redness around my nose, life just begins to be a lot more bright. <laughs> Somebody commented on my TikTok and asked if I had a beard, and you know what? I literally just had to say yes, because I do. Like, you know what's cool is I really don't give a fuck. I'm gonna try concealing with the LA Pro Girl Concealer. I don't usually use this one, but we're just gonna see how it works because it's pretty high coverage and I see all the girlies use it. The LA Pro Girl does blend in better with fingers, so I'm gonna try that first, like really pushing it into the skin. I am going for higher coverage just because I know that's what she did under all those cameras and lights and stuff. I'm gonna do a spray of setting spray and then let it sit because I need something to help like melt and hydrate my skin. I'm gonna let this dry. Maybelline Fit Me Loose setting powder. Literal best setting powder in the entire history of the universe, the world ever to exist. And I'm going to bake in the places that I want to kind of pull forward and take away shine. Really pressing that into the skin, really pressing it in. Problem alert, problem alert. The sponge seems to have picked up some of the product as I was That's laying it rough. down. So it kind of moves shit around a little bit. I'm just gonna have to put a little more powder there to kind of cover that up and it's just gonna look a little dry. That's fine. Life goes on, bro. Da -da, life goes on. All right, we are matte and fabuloso. Let's move on to the soft sculpt. To keep the placement more precise and diffused, I'm going to be using a powder. This is the Cover FX Bronzer in Soft Sculpt. I don't know if they still make this. It was like $40. It's a nice powder, but $40, damn, like, okay. In the picture, I'm noticing a lot of the sculpt is like, it's not super carved, but it's like from here go very light layers. I'm gonna start with like barely any product on my brush and then slowly build up. That's how I'm gonna get that soft, diffused look. I'm just building dimension. You can see, like it doesn't look like my cheekbone is carved for the gods, but it does add some nice dimension to my face so it's not like a circle. And then I do see some light sculpting on the jaw. I'm just gonna kind of flicky and then kind of enhance the chin a little bit. I always like to just have a clean, super fluffy brush to just always blend whatever I just did and make sure that everything is copacetic. This will also help knock off some of that powder if we don't need it. 
And see, this is why it's good that I used her image because we have a very similar face shape where her makeup artist placed her contour, like right here, right here, is very good for that heart round face. So just by simply mimicking what she has, I'm, I'm already being super cohesive with my features. The nose contour is pretty standard. Again, not what I'm used to. I'm not used to contouring like right down the sides here, just like not my favorite, but I kind of want to try something new, so we're going to try how she has it. Because I think with a very clean um, lid look, adding some dimension here with the nose contour is going to help pull the face together. Move my face in the mirror, and when I, wherever I see the shadows start on my nose start to appear, I'm going to stop moving my head and then place the powder where I see that shadow. And I'm again sticking with powder on a fluffy brush so I can get a really diffused look and lightly build. And I can also control how much I'm using. With cream, it's more like you apply it on the face and then blend it out, but with powder, I can just lightly add layers over time. Now this is crazy. And I am gonna bring it up to here. Like I said, the Shadow look is not very defined, so. Ooh. Uh oh. I'm gonna diffuse it with my fingers. And then I'm gonna actually add some bake. I'm gonna add some baking powder right underneath where the nose contour is to really snatch it in. Okay, I like that. Blush. If you're thinking about contouring, highlighting blush, think of your face that is split into three sections. We've got two side planes, that's here and here, and then we have the front plane, which is this middle panel. And it's split, if you're looking at yourself straight in the mirror, it is where your iris ends, if you're looking straight. None of her blush or contour really comes past these side panels, so it never comes further than here. And the blush isn't really prominent. What I do know is the blush is definitely in the same tone as the lipstick. It just looks like a lighter version. I can see the lipstick is a cooler, neutral cool red, so there is more blue as opposed to orange uh, in the undertones, so I'm going to go with a cooler pink blush. This e.l.f. angled brush, I always say it deserves friggin' awards because it's so good. It's my MAC Go Play blush in Shake K Devo. It's actually a really good blush. It goes on very light, very diffused, it's Sweet. very easy to build. Again, keep it very high up and far back. That gives a more high fashion type vibe. And that's it. I'm just adding a little dimension, adding a little color. I'm not super wanting that blush type look. These brows, every hair is like brushed up and then sort of fans out to give a very thick and fluffy look, but in a super natural way, which I love. Got to be glue, spoolie brush, you know the drill. So I like to think of your brows as growing in three sections. This section grows straight up, this section grows this way, and then this section grows down. So I like to brush in that direction. It's like a rainbow type of motion. Instantly that just lifted my eye, it lifted my face, it lifted my spirit. Now, because the hairs are very natural looking, I'm going to opt for a eyebrow marker so I can really draw those thin, fine hairs. I'm making sure I'm resting my hand on my face so I can get a nice, stable hand to draw these very fine hairs. Moving on to the eyes, this eyeshadow look is so beautiful, so natural, so clean looking. It does kind of look like they probably used a cream shadow. I am really not fond of cream shadows, so we're gonna kind of alter it with the products that I have. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to be using the LA Pro Girl White Concealer. Now the placement of this is my favorite. It is hugging the outside of the ball of the eye. I'm just gonna apply a very little bit in the place that I see it in the picture. Like there. And then a little bit on the lid as well. Blend it out with my finger. Perfect, that's literally just what I wanted. It's also gonna help our shimmer stick a lot better. It's almost acting like a primer. Now for the shimmer. I use this as an excuse to go buy something. The Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm. Because I literally went around and I put every white shimmer that Sephora had in that store on my hand and then just walked around. 
This one just shimmered in a way that I've never seen before. So before I go in with the shimmer, I'm going to check in with the other photos that I found of this same look to make sure that my placement is exactly how it was in the picture. And just as I suspected, in another photo, it looks way less intense. But that is an example of how the lighting can really change how it looks. Oh Lord, won't you buy me? A diamond bomb. <laughs> this was totally worth the last $44 in my bank account. If you follow me on Instagram, then you probably saw my story where I got recognized. I got recognized by the cashier at Sephora, which was such an insane moment. It, you know, my first emotion, holy shit, this is so cool. Second emotion, Oh fuck, I have $45 on my account and this is $44 with tax. How embarrassing is it to be like, oh my God, are you Rachel from TikTok? And I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, your card declined. And I'm like, well, <laughs> but it didn't decline. Life was good after that. Um, nice and breezy. If you're the girl I saw, thank you so much for saying something to me like that. Honestly, the thing I love the most about making content and stuff is the community it builds. So when I get to actually meet you in real life, it's like, we're actually best friends already. Wow. Oh my god. You know what I'm gonna try? I'm gonna try getting it on my brush and spraying with setting spray and see if that intensifies it. And that's just what we needed, folks. Oh, this is crazy how that just happened. Before it was just sparkle and now you can actually see the- what? I am gonna add a little bit of bronzer to the outer half of my eye just to create a little more dimension, especially when we're working with white and sparkle. It's gonna really flatten out the lid. So the liner, though me and Sally Girl, we have almond eyes, this liner is definitely upturned. So we're gonna have to manipulate a little bit because the cat eye is important to the look. The shape is important, so I wanna keep that. So because the line is so sharp, I'm gonna be going in with an angled brush Beep, 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 BH Cosmetics, best. And my gel liner. And whenever you wanna do eyeliner that does not follow exactly your natural eye shape, you always wanna do it looking straight into the mirror first. Go in very short strokes, keep adding little by little. Make sure you keep looking straight, then you tilt up to check, and then fill it in. Give yourself a break. It's difficult to do. And it doesn't start thinning out until the end of her iris. Give yourself little points checkpoints where does it get thicker where does it get thinner that way you can just like copy and paste that on your eye and i'm constantly looking at the photo looking at my eye looking at the photo looking at my eye what's different here something's a little bit off so let's troubleshoot i think hers are going a little bit more straight out i think i started mine a little bit too thick okay we're already on a good on a good path I'm going over this with my NYX Epic Ink Liner in black to get that really saturated black look. There is a light lining of liner around the whole circumference of her eye. So I'm going to go in with a stick liner and I'm going to line the perimeter of my eye. So lashes, I can see in this image that the lashes are at the highest at the outer corner because it's the only part of the lash that's peeking over the liner. So we're going to do these wispy lashes. If you're having trouble getting a lash out of your case without like messing up the band, here's a little trick for you. Take your thumb and just lightly roll on the lash band and it should just slip off like that without messing up the band, without twisting the lash. Thumb, roll. Just lightly pull on it and just work it off because if you go and try to rip it off, it's going to mess up the lash. It's going to get all funky. Little tip for you. Hope you love it. If you're on my TikTok, this is a whole YouTube video on how to recreate an inspirational makeup look you find on Pinterest. If you, you know, if you want to go watch it, you can. If you don't want to watch it, then keep scrolling, okay? Applying the glue. This is so hard with nails. Love it. For lips, it is a harsh line from lip to skin. So I am gonna go in with a lip liner first. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat and Kiss and Tell. It's a pretty neutral red. I am gonna overline a little bit because I want that Selena top lip, you know what I mean? Okay. 
And then I'm gonna use the, the It Cosmetics Fanciful Matte Red. It's cute. The lipstick has a little bit of a sheen to it, so I know it's not a liquid lip, and I know it's not just a gloss. It looks like a pretty standard satin, regular bullet lipstick. <gasps> Guys! I think we did it! I think we literally did it. We have the matte sculpted skin, the shimmery white eyeshadow, the beautiful cat eye, and the beautiful neutral bold red lip. I think we're sallied out here. Let me do the face. Let me do the face. Okay, wait, she has a hand here. She's like... Okay, you guys, that's how I go step by step in recreating an inspirational makeup photo, tailoring it to my face and the products that I have and what I know I like while introducing some new things as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, maybe you want to subscribe. Maybe you want to follow me on TikTok or Instagram. I don't know. I'm just suggesting it. I'm not saying you have to. But hey, we'd love to have you stay here a while. Okay, it's no trouble at all. I hope you guys have such a good day and I hope you have such a good life. And I love you so much. I love you. Bye. Beep. <laughs>